Good morning, guys. Welcome to this session and thank you for joining. Today, I will present how I integrate Splunk Cloud into a CI CD pipeline. My name is Atif Kuki and I am a consulting sales engineer working and based in Paris. This is the plan for today. I will start by a quick overview of what is a Splunk application. The goal will be to give you some context about what I will implement later. I will list then some interesting Splunk tools and helpers that are automation friendly. Then I will explain the app fitting in Splunk Cloud. I will present the architecture that I implemented for this need and I will do a quick demonstration. So let's start by the beginning. What is a Splunk application? A Splunk application is quite simply a set of package configuration files allowing to add support of new technologies, the creation of new knowledge object, new dashboards and visualizations. A Splunk application is formed with a well-defined structure and depending on the content of configuration files, it can be deployed on search tier, index tier or data collection tier. The lifecycle of Splunk application is the same as any other kind of applications. Splunk team need to understand the need, gather requirement, understand and import data, create the application, enrich this data and extract fields, create dashboards and visualizations, test and validate all that, and then package and release. As I said, the life cycle of a Splunk application is like any other kind of applications. And so we can think about integrating the Splunk application into a CI CD pipeline to automate test and deployment. So let's present some interesting Splunk tools for automation. The first one is Splunk add on builder. So it is a Splunk application that helps you build and validate Splunk application and add-ons. The Splunk add-on builder will guide you through all of the necessary steps of creating an add-on. And so it will reduce development and test time by following automatically best practices and maintaining the good quality of application. The add-on builder is available on Splunk base. The second one is SimData. It allows to test your configurations and your knowledge object by generating a set of sample events. The user can define scenarios for the simulated events, so the sample set of data will not be repetitive. You can switch from one scenario to another to test how your application is behaving. SimData can be used for test and for live demo. Let's move now to talk about PyTest. It is an open source test plugin which allows to test knowledge object, SIEM compliancy, and index time properties. PyTest will generate tests for Splunk knowledge objects and validate SIEM compatibility and fields extractions. PyTest can be called using the command line and it is easy to automate. The next tool is AppInspect. It's a very powerful tool that helps to verify app quality and check content spec rules. It will analyze configuration files and find possible errors and failures. For a Splunk Cloud customer, AppInspect will give a cloud-ready validation of best practices. AppInspect can be called using the command line or using the REST API. And finally, and the most important is that you need to understand and study the list of endpoints that you can use with Splunk Cloud. As a Splunk Cloud customer, you can use a limited subset of the Splunk REST API endpoints, and you are restricted to interact only with the search tier. Depending on what you are deploying and the content of your application, you must choose the endpoint that suits the best with your needs. So let's have now a quick overview of the process of updating in Splunk Cloud. Splunk is an open platform. 
and developing application to extend Splunk native features is possible and simple to do. But Splunk Cloud is a software as a service platform, and for obvious security reasons, adding content to the platform is strictly controlled. This process is called cloud vetting, and it determines whether an application or add-ons can be installed on Splunk Cloud or not. Apps and add-ons must be evaluated to ensure the security of the Splunk Cloud platform, as well as the security of the data stored in that platform. This process is automated, but in some cases, it requires a manual check. So now that we have made a reminder of basics information like Splunk App definition and structure, available tools for automation, and Splunk Cloud validation process of private applications, let me present the architecture that I defined and I implemented to have Splunk Cloud working with the CI/CD pipeline. So basically, once developer commit a new version of a configuration file, we will use App Inspect first of all to validate the application structure, the validity of configurations, and all checks provided by App Inspect to guarantee application quality and compliance with Splunk Cloud rules. The second test I added to this pipeline will be done using a Docker container, where I installed a specific version of Splunk. The goal will be to test the new application version with the targeted Splunk version and then generate some sample events and test extraction of mandatory fields. Once all validation passed successfully, deployment can start. For this step, I implemented in Python a config parser. It will go through all configuration files and all dashboards and then deploy the content stanza by stanza to the configuration endpoint. The only requirement here is to have the application already created in Splunk Cloud. As for now, it's not possible yet to create a new application using REST API. If the application is empty or the configuration stanza is new, the script will create it and Splunk Cloud. Otherwise, script will update the configuration with the new attributes found in the new version. Once this job finished successfully, you can check your Splunk Cloud instance and you will find that a new version of your application was deployed. Enough talk, let's go to the demonstration. So for this demonstration, I set up three servers, my GitLab server and my GitLab runner, where I installed App Inspect and Docker, and my Splunk Cloud instance. In this instance, I embedded some access combined data. I chose to set a custom source type for those events. So as you can see, I don't have any fields extractions. The goal for this demonstration will be to deploy this application. This application contains the definition of this custom source type, some knowledge objects, and a dashboard. This is the repository where I manage my CICD pipelines and I have all my scripts. In this file, I have the definition of my pipelines. The first step will be to validate the application using the Splunk aspect that I installed on my GitLab runner. The second step will be to create the Docker container, install Splunk into this container, install my application, and the application that will generate some sample data then validate some fields extractions. Once all those steps pass successfully, then I will move to the deployment step. So I will deploy configurations and views. I have two steps because I need to deploy my configurations using an endpoint, and I have to deploy my views using another endpoint. Then the last step, 
will be to package my application and generate the TGZ file. The script that will run Docker and install Splunk on it, and then it will copy my application and the application that will generate some sample data into this Splunk version. Then it will restart my Splunk, validate that everything is working well, and then I will use Splunk search to test if I have all extractions of mandatory fields. So it's a very simple test, but it can validate that all extractions in my new custom access combined source type are working well. If everything is okay, the test will pass. Otherwise, the test will fail and no deployment will be done. And finally, I have my Python scripts that will parse my configuration files and then deploy file by file and stanza by stanza to my application on the Splunk Cloud instance. So the first file will be the one that will target the conf endpoint. So I will loop through all .conf files and then I will parse the content of those configuration files and stanza by stanza I will create my request and then send this request to Splunk Cloud instance to the conf dash the configuration file and submit my configuration. The same logic will be applied for the views endpoint, but we will parse the content of the views directory to submit all dashboards. In this repository, I have this app management application. This application will generate some noise and some sample data and I will test my extractions using those sample data. And finally, this is the application that I developed and I wanna test and deploy automatically using CICT pipeline. So let's start deploying. The first step will be to create an empty application on my Splunk Cloud instance. So simply I have to create a new application with the same name and that's the only manual thing that I have to do on my Splunk instance. Then I have to open my command line and I have to commit and push my change. And I have to go to my GitLab server and I have to monitor the results of my jobs. So as you can see, the first step was passed successfully. If I click on the app inspect job, I can see the output of my app inspect command to validate the testing application. So everything is okay. And now I have to wait for the result of my second test. So once all my tests are OK, I can move to the deployment steps and I will start by deploying my configurations. Then I need to deploy my views. Everything is OK. Now I will package this version and generate a TGZ file. OK, as you can see, everything is OK. Let's go back to my Splunk instance and verify that everything is OK. As you can see, my empty application is no more empty. When I click on it, I can see that there is a new dashboard on this application. and my visualizations are working well. If I go back to the search to verify that my fields extractions 
are working well. Wow. So you can see here that I have more fields and I extracted all what I need as fields from those events. Okay. So now let's test a failure. So for this test, let's add a validation on a fake field. The goal here is to make the generate data step fail. And so our pipeline will stop there and we will not deploy to Splunk Cloud instance. Let's commit and push all this. And let's monitor that on our GitLab server. So normally this step will fail as the fake field does not exist. And so we will not have any events matching this search. Okay, so you can see that there is no events matching this search, and so my job failed, and my pipeline stopped in this step and failed, and there is no deployment to my Splunk Cloud instance. Great. This is the end of this demonstration and of this session. Thank you for joining. If you need any help or you have any question, don't hesitate to contact me. The source code of the demonstration is available here. Thank you. Bye.